What is AWS Application Composer? It's a new service that lets you write AWS applications in a visual way, but it also at the same time helps you write code. So let's take a look at how that works. When you go to the console, your pop-up is going to come up and ask you, do you want to do a new project or an existing project? And it's going to ask if you're going to be in connected or unconnected mode. What it's referring to is um, when you load up an existing project, this is not something in your AWS account or on the browser. It's actually a folder or a project on your file system. This app achieves that by using the file access API in the browser. So it's, it, it's this really cool experience of like, you have this focused console application that is able to also be a local dev tool. So um, if you do not want it to be connecting to your file system, you can be in unconnected mode, in which case this is just a browser thing at that point. But I'm gonna go with connected mode. I'm going to uh, connect to this folder. It's gonna ask me, do you want this app to read and write to this specific folder on your file system? And we're gonna say yes. Okay. So if I look at this, I got a canvas, I got resources on the side, and I got my VS code uh, with nothing in it at the moment. Let's go ahead and drag a Lambda function on. So now we see a card is now on the canvas. I can drag this card around. But also if you look behind the browser, we can see that a bunch of code was written on my computer, which is great. And then if you look at the source, a bunch of files have been scaffolded out for me. So I can start writing my Lambda function right away, which is really awesome. Uh, if we double click on this, we're going to see a details panel. And uh, you'll notice this is Node.js. It can be many things like um, so, but I'm going to stick with Node.js. Um, okay, great. So we have this uh, canvas where we can move cards around. This is the sort of metaphor analogy we're using here is that a card represents um, a Lambda function in this case. Um, and then all of these are the details. Let's highlight the template again. I'm going to drag on a DynamoDB table, which is a very serverless thing to do. Um, now we can see a bunch of stuff has been written for a table. Now if I double click on this, I'm gonna switch or change some things around. I'm gonna call this notes table. And I'm gonna call this PK, and I'm gonna click yes to the sort key. I want one of those, and I'm going to call it SK. And so what I'm doing right now, I'm filling out a form. This is very like, this is a very console type thing to do. And some people refer to this as click ops. And what they mean by that, they mean that, well, the console provides this really nice streamlined experience for uh, configuring, creating, updating, deleting things, um, AWS resources, let's say, and it's great for learning uh, because it, it, it's, this, it's this dedicated experience to that specific resource. But when it comes to um, uh, using this in, in a production environment, the common advice is, well, you're going to want to get away from clicking and instead write CloudFormation, some sort of code that you check into a GitHub repo, or not GitHub, a, a Git repo, and then that triggers some pipeline. And the reason why that's the advice is because um, a pipeline executing code is reliable and repeatable and fast. Whereas someone clicking on the console is, n is not very repeatable and it's not very fast. So it's almost like you have to choose one or the other. The crazy thing about what I'm doing right now is that I would describe this as a click ops type of thing, as a console type thing. But when I click save, I'm also writing code. So it's almost like I don't need to choose anymore. I'm doing both. I can have I can have both. Um, so it's interesting. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting that we're able to do both at the same time. So okay. So now uh, let me just drag a few more Lambda functions on, um, and a bunch of code was written. A bunch of files were scaffolded. That's great. Next thing I want to do is to write code that talks to, that maybe interacts with this DynamoDB table. And this is where we need to start thinking about permissions. And whenever you're, you're, you're writing, whenever you're putting together many small resources that need to talk to each other, you end up having to think about permissions quite a lot because you need to connect these pieces all together as, in, in some way. And when you're in development mode, it's really tempted to be like, oh, let's just 
just star everything and let's get on with it. I just want to figure out how to how this app works. And it's tempting to do that, but it's also very dangerous to do that because you may forget to lock that down at some point, especially if there's lots of connections you might not remember one of them or something like that. It's a much better idea to be safe from day one, be secure from day one, and just uh, think about uh, about how to make sure things only can talk to the things they need to um, right away. Um, but there's a bit of friction as as you're in the development process or if, if you're in the experimental process or whatever in your, your in building your app. So can Composer help with this? Well, when we zoom in, we can see that um, there's these circles on the side and these are referred to as inputs and outputs. On the left are inputs, on the right are outputs. In the case of function and table, there's only one input and one output. If I click on this, you see this line uh, appears and a bunch of inputs have lit up blue, meaning um, those are valid inputs that I can connect this line to. So I'm gonna connect this to the table, which uh, will end up, it'll end up writing some code for me. But what exactly did it do? If we look at that function, we can see environment variables were added and the policy was added. So now I can be secure by just doing this and it's fast and it's not a whole lot of friction. And this is great because we can not lose momentum in our, in our experimental um, dev cycle or, or whatever, trying to figure out how this app works. But, but that doesn't mean we, we aren't going to be secure. We can be secure and fast at the same time. So that's really exciting um, that this, uh, that composer can sort of allow for that. Um, so now we can see that things are, are getting um, you know, a bit unruly, I suppose. Like this, it's getting, it's, there's many things now. Um, so we have this button called arrange and it will just clean things up for you if, if uh, things get out of hand. Um, the other thing to note is um, like, so with the wheel, you can zoom around, sorry, you can pan, but if you do control wheel, you can zoom in and out. Uh, so that's sort of another way to manage sort of the, a large application. I'm trying to make this thing as big as possible, even though it's not really that big. Um, so we can zoom out and see it. We can arrange it to tighten it up and, and, and organize. Um, and um, if you want to use the keyboard, you can click on keyboard shortcuts and there's just a, a few things you can do there to zoom in and out with the keyboard as well. Okay, so another thing um, that we wanted to think about, like, th like this, is a, this is a new way of working with uh, AWS resources, it's a canvas and so the, um, the, there's different ways to to, uh, to visualize it. There's different ways to think about it. And uh, one helpful way um, to think about your architecture is in groups. You want your group things together as categories of things. So if you click on um, one of these and you hold shift, you can select many things. Let's zoom in here. We got an action bar. We have details that just opens up the side panel. You can double click on something or click details. Um, to open that up. There's a delete button, which will delete this card. But then there's this group. Um, so let's click the group and it will group it. And if I double click on this group, uh, it's its own thing. And I can, let's just call it uh, app logic or something. Um, and if you're wondering what that is, so far all these cards represent uh, AWS resources. But if we look at, man, uh, a lot of stuff's been written. If you look at the very bottom here, uh, the metadata, this is this is like a composer specific thing. So it's um, the groups are specified here. And so that means when you load this thing up in composer again, it'll remember all these groups. Uh, so that's what that is. Um, so groups operate a specific way that in, in some applications, um, a group uh, is resizable, maybe it's a box. And so you'd maybe if you wanted to like, let's for say, for example, I, I mistakenly left this thing out, and I wanted to put it in this group might be tempted to be like, oh, I gotta drag the edge of it and make this thing bigger. But in Composer, uh, groups auto size. So like if you just uh, drag this and you see, you see that light up the group here, it'll just, uh, it'll just add it. If I wanted to add this table into it, I'll just drag it over and it'll just grow to be whatever it needs to be um, to, to contain everything. And this, this was um, 
in an effort to make grouping easy and fast. So when, when you need to like resize everything manually, it can be very time consuming. And um, it, it, that may not be the main thing you're trying to do. Uh, so uh, in Composer, they resize, and hopefully that's gonna make uh, organizing things extremely quick. So, uh, so ex for example, let's just say, um, uh, I'm just gonna drag a, f a few more Lambda functions on here. Um, and um, I'm going that, let's just say they all talk to this thing. Another thing I noticed working with this is like, I don't even care how messy this is because I can just arrange it. Um, so um, the arrange button is really nice. Um, so I got a bunch of things now. So like what I could do is I could drag all these into here, but maybe there there's a lot here and maybe like three of them do a certain thing and five of them do another thing. So I can actually group inside a group. Um, let's just make um, a few groups here. Um, and I could even group this. Like I can go as, as far as I want really. So this is, <laughs> This is meant to be like very flexible, and I could drag this thing into into here, for example, and, and it it's it allows you to very rapidly categorize things, and to redraw these groups would be um, very time consuming and probably would disincentivize you from trying to um, try to organize things in different ways and see see what what makes the most sense from a logical perspective. So, um, and I mean, the amount of YAML that we're writing here as we're doing all this, like we're not even thinking about the YAML, we're thinking about the app, we're thinking about the business logic and, and the, the mental model of what, we're, of what we're trying to build. And so the fact that the YAML just kind of keeps up with, with, our, um, with what we're doing in the canvas is just amazing. Um, so I'm, personally, I'm like really excited to see like how this changes how people work when building applications in the cloud. Um, for me, when I work with this, I feel like I'm, I'm leveling up a bit. Like I'm, I'm, I'm at a, an abstraction level a little bit higher and I'm able to see and think at a bit of a higher level. And um, I'm so super excited to, to continue using this and, um, and, and build apps with it. When you look at this um, list of things, like we've only gone over Lambda and, uh, DynamoDB. There's a, there's a bunch of other stuff. But when you look at the list, I would call this a focused list. Um, it's not everything under the sun. It's a, it's, a, it's a few things that we want to make sure are done well. Um, but if you look for something, if you look for your favorite service and it's not included in this list, uh, you'll notice that there's a feedback link here. And um, would love to get your feedback. If there's something in here that you're like, oh, I, I really like this tool, but I, I wish it had this, um, please give us your feedback. This is gonna inform what we end up adding next. Um, so yeah, let us know what you think. I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna start building lots of stuff with this and probably make videos around it. So um, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.